Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Welcome back in my youtube channel With me Yusrolana With ID number T 2019-6132 In this video I will explain about chapter 5 That is about Functional theories of translation And in this chapter There are four Four theory The first one is from Katarina Reis Early work on text type The second one is from just a whole metry and the theory is translatorial action. The third one is Scopus theory by Hans G. Fermer. And the last one is Christine North and the theory is translation-oriented text analysis. Well, let's start from the first theory. Text type. Regarding text type, raised 1977, A built concept of equivalent and her work view the text rather than word or sentence and the approach aim initially to assess the translation and raise links the three to their corresponding language dimension and to the text type or communicative situation uh, the main characteristic the text type are summarized as follow so there are th four text type characteristic of text type the first one is informative text type the second one is expressive text type the third one is operative or appellative text type and the last one is audio media text so the first one is informative text type so the language function is informative or representing object and fact jadi di informative text type Uh, tulisannya mengandung informasi for example like journal and the second is expressive text type so the language function is expressive or expressing sender's attitude yang mana tulisannya menggunakan bahasa estetika dan yang pastinya juga mengandung ekspresi for example like poem when we read a poem of course uh, kita juga mengikutkan ekspresinya ketika kita membaca pum like that. And then the third one is operative text type or appellative text type. The language function is appellative or making an appeal to text receiver. And the aim of the appellative function is to appeal to or persuade the reader or receiver of the text in a certain way. Jadi uh, operatif text type ini adalah sebuah tulisan yang bisa membuat uh, orang atau pembacanya menjadi ingin melakukan sesuatu like that. And then the last one is audio media text such as film and visual and spoken at first at first Uh, which supplement the other three functions with visual image, music, and etc. The second theory is translatorial action. So this theory proposed by Justa Holtz Matari, born uh, in 1936, uh, and Justa Holtz is a Finnish translation scholar. So the main purpose of translatorial action is to allow cooperative, functionally educate communication to take place across cultural barriers. And uh, according to the model of transla translatorial action, the role of source tech is very limited. In the process of translation, Hulse Mentory reduced the source text analysis to a mere analysis of construction and function and give no instance intrinsic value to the source tag except uh, for the realization of its communicative function so the concept of transla translatorial action requires a lot more effort on the part of translator than uh, traditional concept of professional translation 
when the translator is expected to research whether the content of the short text is functionally fit for the target text and the target culture. And according to her theory, the source text can go through many translational chains for the benefit of target reader. Uh, her theory argues that the target situation is of utmost importance to the uh, to the translator and not the source tag that the translation is just a part of the uh, translatorial action then in specifying the factor the act as a guide for trans translatorial action Holzman theory clarifies that any action is uh, determined by its function and its purpose Accord accordingly the resulting outcomes in this case the translated target text should also be judged by its function and purpose and in his theory the purpose of the translatorial action process is uh, to produce a message transmitter that can be utilized in superordinate configuration of action whose function is to guide and coordinate communication uh, cooperative cooperative action like that then the task of the translator is to produce message transmitters for intercultural usage and the particular purpose of the message is very important the third theory is corpus theory of translation so first thing that you need to know that the word scopus is a greek term which means purpose and it is a technical term encompassing the purpose of translation of translating uh, the story was developed by hans g vermer on 1978 and in scopus theory translation is considered as a communicative activity where the purpose of the target text is the top of, uh, the top priority to determine how to translate text. Uh, Scopus theory is among the functional theories of translation that basically use communicative approach to the analysis of translation, and it started in Germany in 1970 and 1980, giving a shift from the linguistic typologies or uh, categorization type of translation into a more culturally consideration one and then uh, scopus theory follows six basic rules the first one is a translational action is determined by its scopus the second is uh, it is an offer of information in a target culture and target language concerning an offer of information in a source culture and source language the third is a target text doesn't initiate an offer of information in a clearly reversible way the, th the fourth is a target text must be internally coherent and then the fifth the five is the fifth is a target text must be coherent with the source tag and the last is the five rules above stand in hier hierarchical order with the scopus rule predominating okay let me discuss the this rule rule number one is the superior superior of all rule such that uh, the translated text is regulated by its purpose uh, rules number two means both uh, the source tag and translated text have particular function uh, in, in 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 this specific linguistic and cultural context such as such that their function may not be necessarily uh, the same like that whereas four and five give us the idea on how to evaluate the success of translation by judging its functional education uh, which is consists of coherence rule and fidelity rule 
So coherence rule means the translated text must uh, make sense to its receiver considering their circumstance, knowledge, and needs. While fidelity rule means uh, there should be consistency between the translated text and source text. Okay, then we move to the fourth theory or the last theory, that is translation-oriented text analysis. So, Christine North text analysis in translation presents a more detailed function model incorporating elements of text analysis, which examine text organization uh, or above sentence level. Uh, North first make a distinction between two basic type of translation product, which are documentary translation and instrumental translation. Documenta documentary translation serve as a document of a source culture communication between the author and the source text recipient. For example, like literary translation or word for word or Liter literal translation like business contract and certificates and then instrumental translation serve as an independent message transmitting instrument in a new communicative action in the target culture and uh, is intended to fulfill its communicative purpose without the recipient being conscious of reading or hearing a text which in a different form was used before in the in a different communicative situation like that and then not highlight the three important aspect the first uh, the first aspect is the importance of the translation commission the second aspect is the role of source tag analysis and the last is the functional hierarchy so the first is translation commission the translator must always keep in mind the client requests or guidelines and etc so the translator must compare the source text and target text profile as defined in the commission and see where they may differ like that and then the second is the role of source tag analysis and north north list of intratextual factor is a possible model for analyzing the source tag and the last is the functional hierarchy of trans translation problems okay might be that's all the explanation about uh, chapter 5 I'm so sorry if there are many mistakes from me. Thank you for your nice attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.